What's going on guys, it's Dari here, and today we're going to talk about dates and times in JavaScript. Now before I continue on, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button down below, so you don't miss out on any content. Now, date and times are very important when it comes down to any programming language, so it's not different for JavaScript. You have probably came across a website ever before where you saw a calendar or a train schedule, or maybe your local barbershop where you could set up an appointment online. Obviously, these applications need to show the relevant times based on the time zone that you're in. And an awesome thing that JavaScript provides for us is called date object. What the date object provides for us, well, let's actually create one first. Let's create a constant called now, and let's set it equal to a new space, capital D of date, and this date name is a function. And remember that I've told you that whenever you work with a function, you need to use a set of parentheses and you need to close it off with a semicolon. Now, if we save it, you can see that nothing's happening right now because we need to create a console log first. So let's do that. And let's console log now. Let's save it. And you can see that depending on where you are in the world, the day, the date, the time, and the time zone are printed out on the screen. And this changes every single time that you save the browser because this will actually update itself. So let's save it. And you can see that my time has been updated. We could also see the type of this constant. So let's create a new console.log and that's console log the type of variable now. Let's save it. And now you can see that the type of our constant is an object, which is right because the date function is a reference type, which is an object. The problem is that you don't always want an object and maybe it's weird for beginners to understand why, but just follow along and it will make more sense in a little bit. Let's create a new let called val and let's set it equal to now, so our date time, punctuation mark, so I want to call a function called to string. And what we're basically doing with the to string function is converting it to a string. If we want to see the type, we need to change the type of now to type of val. Let's save it. And now you can see that our date time has been converted to a string. We could also add a date. So let's go right below our val by creating a new constant called birthday and let's set it equal to a new date function. And inside the parentheses, we could add some numbers. The first number that we want to add is the year. So let's say 1995, comma, space. The second one is the month. So let's say six. And let me actually add a comment for the month because you need to remember that JavaScript counts the months from zero to 11 and not the regular one to 12. So six in our normal language will be June, but in programming six will be six plus one, which is equal to July. The next one that we want to add is a comma space, and this is the day. So let's say the 19th. So we have the 19th of July in 1995. So let's save it. Well, let's actually place our birthday in the console log, save it. And you can see that 19th of July was on a Wednesday. Now, what we did right here was adding numbers, right? But we could also print the same exact thing with a string. So let's go right below our birthday. Let's set birthday equal to a new date function again. And inside the parentheses, let's add single quotes. Inside the single quotes, we basically need to specify the month first. So let's say July. So not the number, but the actual name, July. Space, the day, so the 19th. Space, the year. So let's say 1995. If we save it, something went wrong because we cannot redefine the constant again. So let's change const to let. Let's save it. And now you can see that the output is exactly the same as using numbers. We could also change the time. So right after the 19th, let's add a comma, space, followed by the hours. So let's say 20, so 8 p.m., comma, space, the minutes, let's say 30, 
comma, space, the second, zero, zero. And let's comment out the second birthday that we have because it will overwrite the first one. Let's save it. And you can see that we changed the time to 8.30. And this works the exact same way as for the string. So let's remove our comments. And after the 1995, let's hit the space. Let's write down 20, colon, 30, colon, 00. zero. Save it. And the output is still the same. We could do the same thing, but with a forward slash. So let's set birthday equal to a new date function again. And inside our parentheses, let's add single quotes. And the first thing that we want to add is the year. So 07, forward slash, 19 for the day, forward slash, 1995. Save it, and the output is still the same. And obviously you could add time as well. So let's say 20, 30, 00, zero. save it, and the time is the same. There are lots of functions that we could use. And there are actually too many to go over them in one video. And they all work pretty much the same. So let's go to Google. Let me make my screen bigger. Now let's go to Google. And what I want to search for is date and time JavaScript. And if we scroll down a little bit, you can see the website W3Schools. So let's click on it. And if we scroll down, you see a couple functions that we could use. So let's go back to our code editor and right below our birthday. So let's create a new let called x and let's close it off. Right below of it, let's set x equal to birthday. So the latest birthday that we have. And what we want to do is to add a punctuation mark. And you can already see a couple functions that we have. But what I want to focus on is, well, the month first. So let's get the month. Punctuation mark, get month. And remember that all these methods that you see are functions. So we also always need to add our parentheses. Let's change birthday in our console log to variable x. Let's save it. And you can see that the month is six. So six plus one is seven. And the type is a number. We could get the, well, let me add a comment, get the month. We could also get the year, so get the year. Let's set variable x equal to birthday, punctuation mark, get full year. Save it, and you can see that the year is 1995, and the type is a number. We could get the day, so let's set a comment, get the day. Variable x is equal to birthday, punctuation mark, get day. Save it. And while this might be pretty weird for you because it's a number of three, and this happens because the value is always between zero and six. So think about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday as index zero, one, two, three. We could also get the hours. So get the hours, and that's at variable x, equal to birthday, punctuation mark, get hours. Save it, and the hours is 20, so 8 p.m. But if we delete our time, save it, you can see that the time is zero because it does not exist. And these were, well, a couple functions that you could use. This was it for this video about date and time objects. In the next video, I want to dive into if statements in JavaScript. If you do enjoy my videos and you want to see more, leave this video with a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.